Welcome to Shom Achshav on the Daf Shirespan Tzolui Nishma Sam Yakov Shom Le'ab Basitzchok. We're holding what Metziah Daf Ches. The Gemara with base has the sugya of Rochuv Umanik. Yeah, one who's riding an animal, one who is leading an animal. The question is, which Kenyan is stronger? Now, the interesting thing is that the Gemara calls the one who's riding the animal Rochuv. Rochuv means someone who's being ridden. Now, Lechura, the right word in Diktuk and Lashon HaKaitesh should have been Rochov, someone who is being ridden, but it should be Rochov, someone who's riding. We talk about a person who's riding an animal. He's Rochov al Hamar. He's not Rochov. Why is it more using the Lashon Rochov and not the Lashon Rochov? So, to his Yom Tev, I address as this in a very random place, so to speak. It's a Mishnah in Dorian Perg, Yud Mishnah Gimel. For there, the Bartanura is referring to someone who's engaged, and the Bartanura calls him, Hey, a Orus, Aleph Reish Vav Samech. Says it to his young tip, the correct Lasha should be Oiris. He is being Me'aris, a woman. He's somebody who's doing Eirusin. Why is he called the Orus, Aleph Reish Vav Samech? Which the Mashmo says it's being done to him. So this Yadav starts by saying, no, that's the Derech and Lashon HaKadosh. When I want to give a title, when I want to give a noun, correct, the verb is Oyres, is someone who's doing something. But you want to give it now the name of the person, and it brings a few examples. The Apostle says, Sarua Kalut, Sarua Savua, and the Chorah, these all these examples are not necessarily good examples, because they were not just talking about the title, but we're talking about actual something that happens to the people. But there's the other ones that bring a riot from there that a title automatically has a different way to use the word. The word becomes something that's happening to somebody. And then he brings the Gemara Bo He says, that's why by us it says, Rachuv Umanik. Really, a person is riding the animal, but we're giving it a name. His name is a Rachuv. And another example, which many of the first should point out, is the fact that we're calling somebody who is a Malshin, who goes to the Malchus and speaks about his friend, he's called a Mosor. Mem Samech Vov Resh. It should be called a Moiser. He's Moiser the Malchus. Why is he called Mosor? That's the title. That is the first shot of the Teisus Yom Tev. But then says the Teisus Yom Tev that he heard from his Rebbe, the Maharal, a different shot. The Maharal says, you know why a Moiser is called a Mosor? Because even though it looks like this person is the poil, he's somebody who's going to the king and say, talk about his friend. He looks like he's a moiser. He's moiser others. But what's going to happen in the end, that he himself will be nimsa lemachos. That will be his punishment. That's why his name is Moser, even though the action he's doing is moiser. Adzotes is young tip. That will be true also regarding an orus. Yes, an orus is someone who's doing kedushin, so he should be oiris. But once he does Kiddushin, he becomes obligated. He's obligated to his wife. It's not only that he does to others, now he has obligations that come on him. That's why the name is Orus. And the Mashmo Sotos Yantav is that whenever someone is doing something, but we want to come and emphasize the fact that he's not only doing, but he's actually receiving. He's not so much of a doer as he looks like. So then we change it to be, instead of the Lushan of Poyel, the Lushan of Poul. Something is done to him. Now, the Tzayyanta doesn't explain, according to this, how do we explain our Gemara? Why in our Gemara it's called Rochuv and not Rochev? But I found that a few Achreinim do point this out. And they say it's interesting, we call him here Rochuv, and we don't call him a Rochev, similar to the Manig, we call him a Manig, not a Munhog, because he's the one who's leading the animal. So why the Rochev is called a Rochuv? So the Shari Lumeshev, in Madur Ishti Saw, Chalak Alev Simen Lamates, he goes on to explain this Gemara, our whole Sugil. He says that some strange things are happening in the Gemara. For example, the Gemara in the beginning, the Gemara understands that Rochov is not Koin. And then the Gemara has a Tzad, that Rochov is even greater than a Manik. Like, how did that change? And the Gemara mentioned that Rochov doesn't walk as much as a Manik. Why should that make a difference? So he explains to Sher Lumeshi that when someone is riding an animal, there's a Chisarin over here. Because yes, he is pushing the animal. But the animal is also walking on its own. He's not completely controlling the animal. It's not like a manic, someone who's leading the animal, where he is actually carrying the animal, he's moving the animal with him. Here, when a person is Rechev, the animal has some control on the Adam. So that's why Rechev is maybe not such a good Kenyan. 
But when you have Rochu Manik, you have one person leading the animal, one person riding the animal. The one who's riding the animal is may be able to over, overcome the Manik and lead the animal to a different direction. So that's why he may be greater than a Manik. Adds the Shirley this Svar of his, that if someone's Rochu of an animal, He's not completely in control of the animal. It's very meduyik in the Lushan, says the, the, the Shalom Meshiv. Because why does it say, Rochuv and not Rochiv? Because it's not completely in his control. That's why it's called a Rochuv. And this fits so beautifully with the Tesis Yomtev. That whenever someone is doing something, but he's not completely the one controlling it, or it affects him in some way, so then you don't lose the Yoshan Lushan Poyel, but the Lushan Poyel. And just to end, that Akadosh Bochu is called also a Rochiv. And as they brought down the Svarim, the whole and hog of Akashbuch in the world is called Merkava, Maisa Merkava. Kivyoch Akashbuch is Roichev in the world. So I have to just to add to what the Shalomesh says, Bishop Tesis Yamtiv. There is really only one Roichev in the world. The only Roichev who is completely in control and nothing Kivyoch affects him, that's the Rebbeinu Shalom. Every other Roichev is not a real Roichev, he is really a Rochuv because they. The things that happen are not completely in his control, as the Shalomeshu says, and based on the Ma'alach that the Yisrael brings in the name of the Ma'aral. All the Ma'aral equipments are in the attached source sheet. Anyone want to join the Shalomeshu email us to WhatsApp, please email Shalomeshu at gmail.com.